Hey everyone, uh, thanks so much for joining us for today's webinar. We have a really great topic that we're talking about today, something that we've uh, been having a lot of questions about, and we just wanted to fill you in. So today we're talking about 2022 and 2023 research and development tax credits, kind of where does the bill stand, where do the credits stand, and what's our plan for the future. And so Don recently went to Washington, D.C. last week and got to speak with a couple of our senators and kind of figure out where exactly this stands. And so now we're going to pass along the information and the plan to you. So, Don? Yeah, thank you, Ryan. Mm -hmm. So let me, first of all, take you back, just kind of refresher. So in January of this year, H.R. 7024 was passed 357 to 70 by the House. Unbelievable. Uh, I think yeah. you said it's 25 years. It's never been that strong of bipartisan yeah. support. Then it went to the Senate and pretty much sat there mm -hmm. all year long until the end of July when they're about ready to go on August recess. Mm -hmm. And it's called a cloture vote. And so um, uh, Senator Schumer put it up for a cloture vote. And when he realized that there was not a majority to pass it, mm -hmm. he voted against it, which I didn't understand, as I said in my last video. But what that allows them to do is to have some horse trading on and some, some debate going on in it to get this uh, package passed. Mm -hmm. Well, the expectation was, of course, that they were going to be working on that. And so I felt like I needed to have a conversation with them. So I went to Washington, D.C. last week and, and met with a couple senators, a couple congressmen. Um, and so I want to kind of share with you what I found out. So right now, if you listen to the news, they are working on the budget and they are trying to get it done. It's a matter of what, less than two weeks before the end of this month. Mm -hmm. And then the government shuts down. So that's got the highest priority going on right now, even though they're doing running through the motions. I've seen some of the bills that they're working on. But nothing huge like this here. So when I talked to Senator Tillis, Tom Tillis from North Carolina, who sits on the finance committee, his comment to me was that, or his, his team's comment was that it would be malfeasance mm -hmm. if they accepted HR 7024 as it was. Yeah. yeah. So their big hang up, Ryan, mm -hmm. is not the R and D. It is not Section 174, a part of the R and D, the amortization. It is a child tax credit. Mm -hmm. And actually, for the last two years, and the two times this, this has come up, it's been the child tax credit. My good friend, Nathaniel Moran, congressman from the great state of Texas, and I spent some good time, and we talked about this here. He actually was at a House Ways and Means Committee meeting last week on Wednesday, right before uh, I met with him. And he said that the tax package they're putting together, mm -hmm. and actually it was interesting, last Friday, I believe, and I sent that off to our team, the House Ways and Means actually kind of gave a, a, a run through of what they're working on for the tax package. And what I'm talking about is under the Tax Cost and Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. Uh, yeah, <laughs> say that 10 times fast. Yeah. Um, it expires next year. Yeah. And what does that mean to small business owners? As I read an article here, recently, about $7 trillion mm -hmm. of increase that you're going to see over the next 10 years. Wow. That's a huge hit to the economy. And of course, the economy is having some challenges with this right now, so it would be foolishness on their part not to get this addressed. So that's what the House Ways and Means Committee is doing. They are going out, they're touring around the country, Ryan, they're, they're having feedback, and they're, they've put together a proposal for it to go to legislation mm -hmm. uh, the first part of next year. So we have an election coming up in about 45 days. Mm -hmm. Whether, whoever you're voting for is not relevant here, but the point is that depending upon you know, who gets voted in, uh, if there's a majority House, a majority Senate of any particular party, of course, who's president, is going to have a big bearing upon this, how quickly it's going to pass. But based upon uh, Nathaniel uh, Moran's information, he said that it has strong bipartisan support in the House. Um, so we feel very confident and comfortable with that. We expect it's going to be probably comparable to what we saw the, earlier this year with H.R. 7024, mm -hmm. um, because... Listen, what, what I get back is that they realize that small business is the heartbeat of our country. Yeah. And so if you if you take out the heart, that's going to be a problem. Then it goes over to the Senate. And again, depending upon whose majority vote, the only sticking issue that I would still still come up here, but I think that they get it now mm -hmm. after two large attempts, is this child tax credit. Mm -hmm. So um, that all being said, we expect that to pass over there as well. And then, of course, go to whoever's president for their signature. So that's kind of where we stand. So we're suggesting that, um, or let me back one thing also, they said that they want to have it done before April 15th because of the whole amendment issue. Because, again, 
they're going backwards and retroactively to 22, 23, then of course 24. So that's your three year window. And so they're gonna want to make sure that gets done as quickly as possible. So whoever gets sworn in in January, I would expect one of the first legislative conversations uh, votes is gonna happen is gonna be on the tax issue because they, they, they can't nilly nally around because mm -hmm. of just the, the yeah. issues that are coming up. Gotcha. So Don, for our clients who have already completed their 22, 23 study mm -hmm. and they're waiting or they might be anxious or curious about getting that on, what is our official recommendation as far as that goes? Yeah, official recommendation is hold tight. Um, I, I think of that little commercial that they have for one of these car places where they're trying to sell a car. She mm -hmm. says, hold. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, who, yeah. Well, I can't remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. you know, that's what we're asking yeah. you. Just to hold tight. I mean, you, you've you waited. And what's that saying you use? That's always say don't that. sacrifice. Yeah, don't sacrifice what you want most for what you want in the moment. Yeah. So don't get too anxious enough that you're like, I'm, you know, I want to process this now, anything like that. Because ultimately, if you do amortize your credit now, you're locked in for five years to mm -hmm. have to amortize this R and D credit. And if in the next six months they pass this vote, that's what we want to do. We want yeah. to do that over amortizing over the next five years. So um, we as a company have just paused on that because as a benefit to our clients and just want to make sure that you guys benefit from it. We want to make sure we're doing right by you. And so we want to wait for that six months and see Congress vote this in. So. Yeah, exactly. Now, if you have a 21 that you've not done, absolutely do that when they're, yeah. that's under you know the, the, the full expensing in, in the year of, of 21, 22 and 23 are still holding tight. And I will tell you on 24, we had this conversation, in our leadership meeting this mm -hmm. morning, mm -hmm. you know, we'll still do the study mm -hmm. the first part of the year. But we're going to hold tight on the, that filing as well, just because we want to make sure that, again, you are getting the maximum yeah. benefit from this R&D credit. Yeah, absolutely. So, Don, if you got some time, mm -hmm. um, we have a couple questions coming in. Um, so one of the first ones we have here is from a client in North Carolina. And um, uh, they, the first thing that they said is um, since the bill did not pass, uh, which, again, it went to a cloture vote. It's not that it didn't pass. It just right. kind of got paused. Um, but what does this mean for R and D? And what I think they kind of mean by that is like, if this bill doesn't pass or did it not pass, like, is R and D going to continue to be around or what does this mean for the future of R and D? Yeah, great question. And so let me clarify that R and D is permanent as of 2015. Mm -hmm. So there, there's never been a debate about research and development credits. The issue is the section 174, which is requiring amortization over a five year period. That's the issue. That's been the issue of getting resolved. And, you know, I will tell you this here that uh, when I was in Senator Chillis's office last week, that uh, who's on the, again, the finance committee, Senate finance committee, um, his office expressed to me that they've had a lot of pressure mm -hmm. corporately. Cause you gotta think about it. I read this article this weekend, like Apple, they spent $30 billion for R and D. Now, wow. listen, they got a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, we're recording this on an Apple phone, yeah. got this Mac <laughs> thing here, but anyways, yeah. Yeah. they got a lot of money. But the point is, that there's a lot of pressure from these corporations because other than I think AI and, and, and phones and computers, you know, it's really, really hurting a lot of the small and medium sized business owners to have to amortize from a tax perspective. Yeah. And we, we referenced this on another episode of our podcast, but we have a, a personal connection who's having to essentially take out a loan because they're being forced to amortize. They're in the, the group of people that they don't have a choice. So software development, technology type mm -hmm. stuff. And so they are getting taxed on this amortization schedule, and they're having to take out a loan to pay taxes, which yeah. is crazy to think yeah, about. Especially today's interest rates. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so there's something, like I said, we don't want anybody to have to bear that burden. And so yeah. that's why we're saying just hold off and wait for that. Now, we have another question coming in here. Um, this one is from Georgia. Mm -hmm. um, and they said, um, is uh, Quartermaster going to amend our 2022 returns should the bill pass, and 23, should the bill pass? So, yeah, yeah, absolutely, and yes. I'll let you take that question. Yeah, absolutely. So, yes, what we'll do here, um, guys, if you are an engaged client, that is one thing that we're taking on. You don't have control. Typically what happens is is when we do these current year tax credits, we, we complete the study, we prepare the forms, and then you can take that to your CPA and apply on your current year tax filings before you file. But with the amortization schedule, it's caused – obviously just to get put on pause. And so ultimately we will have to go back and amend it. We're not gonna put that back on you to do that. So we will be able to do that. Now, if you would like to go and give it to your CPA so that maybe they could process it a little quicker than yeah. we, you know, because we, you're gonna have a lot coming in basically once they pass yeah. this bill. 
So yes, if you want to take it to your CPA when they pass this bill, absolutely, you can do that. If not, we'll be happy to take care of that for you. So that's part of what we do with them. Yeah, but again, just kind of re re as a reminder, mm -hmm. we don't want to do anything now until no. this legislation gets no. passed. That's the key. There. Yeah, absolutely. So whether we do it or they do it, yes, the amendment only part. when the bill passes. Exactly. Yeah, yeah that, and I yeah. will tell you, there will be yeah. some celebration around oh, this place. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, okay, perfect. So here's another question. This one's from California, a client from California. Um, if we did not take R&D in 2022, can we take R&D in 2023? Yeah, again, going back to the same kind of answer is that because of the amortization requirement, mm -hmm. it would not benefit you uh, tax-wise. Mm -hmm. uh, you still get the credit. It's just the taxes that would be incurred because of the expenses would override the, that benefit. So you know, except with the exception of California, mm -hmm. let me say this here, but if you're in California, you can still file for your state credit and there's no amortization, but on their federal, they definitely don't want to because mm -hmm. of the issue of uh, the tax. Okay, gotcha, awesome. And we've kind of already talked about this, but um, this, this is another California question. Um, but uh, one, will this bill actually pass? <laughs> and then um, two, um, should we continue to wait? Which we already said yes, obviously yeah. on that. But you know, what I guess in your personal like, you know, we don't know what Congress is going to do, but in your personal discussions and things, kind of re-elaborate a little bit on what you think yeah. the probability of this bill passing. Yeah, I had the real strong sense up there, uh, at least from, again, my friend who's a congressman, mm -hmm. um, and I didn't have any other feelings when I was at Dr. Uh, Dr. Senator Chillis's office. Mm -hmm. um, they feel very confident that this legislation is going to pass mm -hmm. again because of the the impact upon small business owners around the country you know whether you liked it or you didn't about you know the who who put this into place which was president trump the reality is it created a lot of uh help for small business owners out there and individuals on the on that note as well gotcha. and on a little note too one of our podcasts coming up and ryan you just a little plug for our podcast if you're not listening to our podcast or subscribing make sure you do so because we're going to talk about the two candidates that are up for election here in just about 45 days, mm -hmm. what their position is from a tax perspective. And I think you need to keep that in mind uh, because it impacts your wallet. Mm -hmm. um, one of the greatest expenses we incur as a business owner or individuals are taxes. Absolutely. Um, I don't see any more questions coming through right now. and I want to make sure we, we uh, steward everybody's time really well here. So um, unless something else comes through in a minute, Don, um, Don I'll let you know. But is there anything else, any closing comments, any reiterations that you want to do as far as this goes? No, I just, first of all, want to say thank you for your patience, particularly for those who started in 22, you know, waiting um, and into 20, uh, let me say this, into 23 and now we're into, you know, 24. It, it's been a journey. Um, uh, the good news is that credit is still there for you. Um, it's not something that, that disappears. Um, so we just want to make sure, again, when all this comes out in the beginning of the year, you're going to hear from me. And I'm going to ask you um, to reach out to your senator and your congressman to encourage them to vote. I, like I said, I feel very comfortable that it's going to pass. Mm -hmm. But you know what? On what I, one that I found out last week when I was in Washington, Ryan, is that there are a lot of voices mm -hmm. there in Washington, D.C. I was there, and while I was in one office, there was three different groups that came in wanting the ear of Senator Tillis to discuss their project. One was about um, bringing skilled uh, uh, employees over from other countries in the, in the technology space who had at least a master's degree or better. Then there was one from the nursing organization. So there's a lot of um, voices out there. Yeah. We need to make, as a small business owner, we need to make sure that our voice is heard heard clearly. There's also some great groups like the NFIB, National Federation of Independent Businesses, who are there actually last week as well. I got to see uh, uh, Congressman uh, Moran go down there and receive an award for that and get his picture taken. And then there's NASB, National Association of Small Business Owners. I would encourage it. They have a very strong voice in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. Encourage you to become a member because, uh, as we are, because they have a lot of when you bring a large group like that together, they can have a lot of impact. Yeah. And, you know, uh, I don't see anybody who would want to vote against this, mm -hmm. uh, even after the elections, because of just the impact it's going to have on our economy. And it's kind of the squeaky wheel gets the oil That's type it. thing. Yep. You got to make enough squeaks yep. <laughs> to get the attention of it. So, um, and I will say I've been more, more yeah. involved in politics the last couple of years than I've ever wanted to be or I'll ever want to be. Yeah, but I know that 
I'm finding out real quickly that we, like you said, the squeaky wheel gets the attention and gets the oil. We have to stand up for small business owners. Yeah, absolutely. So guys, just to reiterate a couple things here. For 22 and 23 R&D, we're on a pause flight mode right now. We're on autopilot until the new year comes, until we get this going. So hold tight with us. We appreciate your patience. Again, once that comes around, we'll be able to begin processing again. So if you've already had your study done, if you're waiting to have your study done, you can still complete that study, but we're not going to actually process anything until this bill passes. So just to make sure that that's clear. Hey, Ryan, can I throw one yeah. other thing yeah, here? Yeah, absolutely. So there is another credit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, put, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll yeah. put a little plug in here. Yeah. So if you're on extension, but if you're watching this here and we've been waiting for this uh, legislation, mm -hmm. we know you're on extension. Yeah. And if you have at least 50,000 plus in federal income taxes that you've either paid or uh, will be required to pay this year, uh, you need to reach out to our office because there's a credit out there that you can take advantage of that will reduce that by right now about 25%. So again, I encourage you, uh, I don't have time to go through it today, no. but I would encourage you to reach out to our office, get on a call with one of our team yeah. members. They can explain it to you. The more taxes that you're uh, responsible for, the better uh, the opportunity. The better candidate you are. Yeah, because uh, like you said, not to get into it, but basically this is a limited time credit. Correct. And so, uh, yeah, if you have that liability, you need to reach out as soon as possible and we can uh, give you some more information. About, Absolutely. On that Thank you very much for joining us. Again, if you don't listen to our podcast, go in there, subscribe to it. Uh, we generally do a weekly podcast on tax subjects mm -hmm. and how to keep more of what you make. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank you.